G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. As you can see here, this is my Atari 800XL, which has become one of my favourite 8-bit micros uh, that I've come across in the last couple of years. Uh, it's currently sitting here uh, with Yump running, one of my favourite games for the machine, and it is currently connected to this monitor via S-Video due to a little mod I did on it ages ago. Now, S-Video is okay, it's an improvement over composite, but not heaps. So the question remains, can you do better? And you can. Uh, there is a mod called the Sophia DVI, and I have one of them right here. So in this little box is the Sophia DVI, uh, and if we open it up, what do we get? We get a cable, which I've already extended, and I'll get to as to why in a minute. We get our DVI connector. Now, I did some hunting as to why you would use DVI and not HDMI. And it's quite simple. HDMI requires a license fee. And that's why things like the RGB to HDMI project exist because the Raspberry Pi Foundation actually pays for that license. So in this regard, we're using DVI. So that's a little board that goes on the end of the cable. And then you have this, and this is kind of the brains of the operation. As far as I know, this is an FPGA recreation of the original GTIA graphics chip that's in the Atari. Uh, and it's done in a way where they're able to pull the digital video signals out of it to feed to the uh, DVI. So I'm going to whip the cover off my 800XL uh, and let's get this installed. So here is my 800XL with the uh, top case, the keyboard, uh, and the top RF shield removed. Um, and what we need to start with is removing the GTIA chip, which in the 800XL's uh, motherboard is this one right here. So if we carefully remove this, and safely put that to one side. Uh, we now take the FPGA board for the Sophia, uh, and this goes into the socket where the GTIA was. And it's a bit of a tight fit, so make sure it's snug in there. And we can use that bit of foam to give the original GTIA uh, a new home. So that's that bit there. Now, if you were to follow the normal instructions, it basically now goes remove the RF modulator uh, and cut a big hole in the back of it. But I'm not going to do that because I came up with another solution. And that is this. This is a 3D model I knocked together. Uh, it uses someone else's model, and I'll put all links in the description for uh, this kind of bit of it here. And I added all this bit. Uh, and this is a replacement for the parallel port cover on the back. So you can probably see where this is going. So we'll start with the little DVI board that comes with the uh, Sophia. And we're going to remove uh, these little guys and just put them to one side for a second. Right. We are then going to make sure I've got this cable the right way around. We're now going to connect the cable to the board uh, and that should just snap in. Just be careful with these because there is a locating pin on uh, the cable uh, plug uh, so you can't get it the wrong way around. And that goes in there like that. You can probably already guess. We put this in here and then put our little standoff looking things back in. Right, that's that done. We now pop out the original uh, parallel port cover and carefully put that to one side. Now, we take this, uh, and it w if you kind of feed it in from the end, it will feed in a bit easier, like that. And we feed this through, and 
This pops in the back, just where the original one cover was, making sure everything's nicely lined up. And we're good. Uh, and this just simply now comes around and plugs into here, but we can kind of get it sitting a little neater, I suppose. And that plugs in there. And that's pretty much the entire install. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook it back up to the screen um, and let's make sure it works before we put all the covers and everything back on. Now, just to quickly point out, I'm actually running this uh, through a DVI to HDMI cable, um, but the, so it's plugged into the HDMI on the screen, but if we give it some power, And we're good, it's booted. Okay, I'm gonna put the covers all back on this and then I wanna do a bit of a comparison between the original S video and the new DVI out uh, because I can do both on this screen. Right, keyboard's back on, I've got my S Drive Max plugged in, I've got my Hyperkin Ranger controller plugged in, uh, which has actually been modded for the 8-bit uh, Ataris to make the paddle work. Uh, and we should be able to give it power. Uh, one thing to note um, is that because it's DVI, it doesn't do sound. Uh, so I made up a, a quick audio cable that plugs into the normal DIN, uh, which just r runs off to a couple of uh, RCA cables for left and right. Even though this is mono, there, yeah, you get the point. Right, power. S Drive Max should boot. And it does, so let's quickly uh, bring up a game. And we're gonna go with uh, Pac-Man because it's an Atari. So right now the sound is running through the external speakers. And that works brilliantly. Right, let's take some side-by-side -side comparisons. See, I died because I was talking to you. Let's take some side-by-side -side comparisons between uh, the DVI connection and the original S video. Uh, and I'm literally going to do this with the camera pointing at the screen to hopefully uh, give a bit of a real world uh, feel to this. Also, I don't have any way to capture S video particularly well. So before we get onto the game demos, which by the way, I managed to find a way of capturing uh, the S video so we don't have to do more of this camera at the screen stuff, I wanted to jump in with uh, one more thing. Uh, and this will actually be the third time I upload this video because I keep finding out new information. Right, I've pulled out this monitor here, which is a tank of an old Dell 27 inch. Uh, and the reason I have is this is actually the first monitor I pulled out when I was initially testing uh, the Sophia DVI. And it wasn't immediately noticed, but noticeable, but if you look, the menu for the S drive kind of just keeps going. And I didn't actually notice that at first until I went to spark up a game. Let me show you, let me pull up Pac-Man. So, you may notice that the whole publisher thing is also missing, which should be about there. And it starts here, and you go into a game, and it's kind of like the monitor gets to about here, freaks out, and just kind of keeps repeating that last line all the way to the bottom of the display. And I thought, oh, well, you know, it's, a, it's an old monitor. Um, maybe there's just some weird incompatibility. Um, and so I pulled out another monitor and didn't really think much of it but it did kind of irritate me. But I was talking about the Sophia in general on the Atari 8-bit group on uh, Facebook. By the way, I'm feeling very kind of action retro here. Anyway, um, and someone left a comment that basically said, have you tried playing with the configuration utility? And me and a mate just kind of went, there's a configuration utility. And it turns out there is, which is a little bugbear of mine when it comes to the Sophia is that 
the documentation and instructions and so forth really aren't that great. Um, and it, I did a bunch of Google searching to see if I'd simply missed uh, this configuration utility, and I hadn't. So I'm going to put this up on my website. Uh, if any of the publishers have a problem with that, so on and so forth, let me know. I'll take it down. I'll find another link, whatever. But if we turn this off and bring it back up again, and it's a utility called sconf.xex. So if we bring that up, and this is the utility to configure the output resolution of the DVI. Now, like I said, it could just be this monitor, but I found that if I selected 1280 by 1024, um, and this monitor is set to simply one-to-one, -one, uh, not fill or set aspect ratio. Actually, I think it's set to auto at the moment. Um, and the rest of the instructions are actually off the screen now, but if you go control B, which is save and reboot, there you go, it all works. And so if I now turn the machine off, bring it back up and go back into Pac-Man, we get the proper publisher copyright. And if I go into the game, it all displays properly. So if you do have one of these and you're getting some weird resolution-y kind of issues where it does weird things, uh, track down that uh, configuration utility um, and you may be able to fix it. So it all be dependent on your monitor, how your monitor, monitor handles different aspect ratios, different resolutions, yada, yada, yada. Um, but it may help you out. Anyway, on to the um, S-Video and DVI comparison. And that'll pretty much do it. That is my Atari 800XL now outputting video via DVI. Uh, and it's very, very crisp. 
Um, some may argue a little too crisp, um, but it certainly does look good. Um, I would like to thank uh, a friend of mine and a fellow collector, uh, Henry, for sending me uh, the Sophia DVI to install on this machine. Um, I will upload my uh, file for the parallel port doohickey uh, on Thingiverse, link in the description, all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, that'll pretty much do it. Uh, if you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, I am now on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. Uh, but that will pretty much do it, and I'll see you in the next one.